Welcome everyone, Adam Dupu here as the recording of this Sunday, August 7th, 2022. As you can see, the road is closed. That's because each and every Sunday here in downtown Celebration, Florida, they do a little farmers and art market on Market Street. Also, I don't think the, the fountain's on over here. I can't tell you the last time the fountain was not operational. Looking closely, there is a lizard right here on the Market Street signage. It is 8.59 a.m. precisely, well, possibly, I didn't mean to say precisely, but possibly in one minute at 9 a.m., maybe the fountain will become effervescent. Possibly. And with every adventure, I don't really know where this is going to lead. Well, every adventure, some, some adventures I know where it's going to lead today. I don't know where it's going to lead. Nonetheless, I am inviting you to join me. Okay, it's nine. I'm looking at the clock right now. Fountain's still not on. Join me. Heading over to Orlando to meet up with a friend. Shall you? And I feel it's going to be a real toasty when you see the, the sun beaming off this glass. I love these clocks they have down here. And I was just informed by a local gentleman that they built this tower. That way they could try to sell and show off to some of the future residents when they built Celebration. This gentleman that's heading over to the marketplace now. Got a little information from, from him. I've been up on that tower a couple times, but they now put a sign up. You used, used to be able to go up there, but now they don't let anybody up there, which is strange. Yeah, until recently, these signs were not here. No one, capital P, permitted on stairs. And there's another sign up there as well. So you can't go up there anymore. You used to be able to walk up there and get like a little bird's eye down market. And I have acquired a piping hot caffeinated beverage. Quick little segue now over to the community, very quaint community of Windermere as traffic goes by. There is a vintage shop over here, a set of wings and World of Mica with a set of wings. Picked me up and we are commuting around with no rhyme or reason what we're gonna do. <laughs> but there's something here at Windermere I wanted to check out. And you go, they have a pretty nice little downtown. Yeah. So we're walking around Windermere for now. And who knows where the wind blows. We might end up going to downtown Orlando as well. The 1890 school is what it's called. Oh, there's an 1890 school? Yeah, I did my very first video ever. Oh, bring it back some memories? <laughs> Kind of. Your very first video. Very first video. The old yeah. stomping grounds oh. of the world of mica. Where is it? Where's it located? Five, mi uh, five minute walk. We're gonna walk so, it? Yeah, I mean, it's right down here. Full of historical buildings, including the Cal Palmer building here. In 1911, John Calvin, or Cal Palmer, and Dr. Howard Johnson. They're a hotel chain named, yeah. named Howard Johnson. <laughs> purchased all the lots of Windermere. And they have one of those give a book, take a book, portable libraries out front. And this is a local historic building as stated on the front here. And Micah was noticing here where it st states that they wanted people to escape the harsh northern winters. They should have put a little footnote on there that there are harsh southern summers here. Because <laughs> it's no joke here, it's hot. Oh, yeah. Now for a while that building over there used to be the town hall where I was just standing at. But this is the current town hall built a few years later, but definitely seen some years and has a kind of a, a vintage quality to it as well. And I love the pavement here with the bricks, not cobblestone, but the brick streets. Gotta love some brick roads. Okay, we've been walking a little bit onto some dirt roads. Forest Street is what the side that says there. Forenth, Forest and Seventh. Really like these houses through here and the trees. And there it is over there on the end. We're going to walk up. And there is a little information here. States here that they would educate 22 pupils. Mrs. Adams was the teacher. And it is accessible. We can walk right up here. Maud Adams. Opened in 1887. The oldest surviving one room schoolhouse in Orange County. And one of the few still standing in the whole state of Florida. Yeah, there's an Orange County, California, and an Orange County, Florida. 
Got the chalkboard there, the blackboard. Got the seats, which are basically just orange citrus crates. And the teacher's desk. Little house on the prairie vibes for sure. And the outhouse around the back. How cool is that? So you have to raise your hand and say, I need to go use the facilities. <laughs> you walk out here down this little gravel area. Of course, this gravel probably wasn't there then. Pretty good ways away from the main building. Yeah, this tree is cool. I bet that tree was here back in then. Oh yeah, I've seen some years. Oh, there's the bell. Class is in session. Definitely love the trees through here. It's shady. All right. In the Mica Mobile, the world of Mobile, the world of Mica Mobile, heading to downtown Orlando. I'm gonna stop by the library. All right, we found parking down here. Now, this is the old Orange County Courthouse, which is now a history museum might pop in there as well. And libraries up on this corner, not this building, but the next one. Also, Mike and I went on and booked a reservation for Guardians of the Galaxy at, was it 3 p.m. or 4 p.m.? 3 p.m. 3 p.m., you'll be your first time on Guardians. Yeah. And from here you can see the geyser-esque fountain at Lake Eola. Yeah, gonna head over to Epcot Center a little bit later. Now, because I am an Osceola County resident and this is the Orange County Library, to get a library card, they charge $125 a year. Kind of take a look at these murals here. It's like a Pony Express guy up there. Pyramids, this worker, iron worker, placing this pole in the ground. This guy's up on a power pole as well, working on some electrical wires. The telephone. There's also the bus bus route through here as well yeah got the rotary dial and then you got the the keypad touch here satellite dish and the satellite up top guess I should have checked to see if on Sundays the History Center is open you think the History Center is open today Oh. it might not be open because it's Sunday the library is open today from 11 to 6, but I don't know if the yeah, Orlando Public Library, but the History Museum. We'll go over there after the library. Oh, classic car alert. We just realized the library does not open till 1, so this might conflict. We're going to do some, a bunch of other stuff today, too, so we might not have a library day today. We were thinking the library opened at 11. Yeah, I thought she said 11 to 6. Like this, one, this one goes to 11. <laughs> okay, we're just going to wander around downtown. It's 11.30 currently, so maybe we'll pop back in. We'll see, we're just kind of, there's no real rhyme or reason today, so we're just kind of, kind of just go with the flow. This is the Orange County Regional History Center. Also, these little scooters are kind of everywhere around here. Doesn't look like anyone's going inside there, so probably not going to be open on Sunday. Oh, there's some fish, there's some aquatic life on this globe. All right, this could work out pretty well because it opens at noon. We just checked the front of the door. So this opens at noon, library opens at one, and then we have to be at Epcot with commuting by three. This could actually work out pretty well. That's pretty neat, the illuminated fountain on Lake Ivanhoe. I never knew about that. The City Beautiful Orlando, which is the nickname of Orlando, is City Beautiful, and a place called Celery City up there. And I always have to go over here and say hello to this gator riding cowboy. Well, he's got a cowboy hat on. I don't know if he's a cowboy, but this alligator sculpture was created by Craig T. Usler. You got the gator there. And you got this. He's got like the eye of the, not the eye of the tiger, but the eye of the, the crocodile gator, alligator. And I think it's a gator. Yeah. Judging by the nose. There's also a couple other ones. There's one here and one over here. They're not real gators. Do not be alarmed. Do not be startled. I have a lot of memories down here from going to a lot of punk rock shows and playing in a band. In fact, across the street is the Beach and Theater, and then next to that used to be the Downtown Jazz and Blues Club, the Social. This used to be a subway where I go and get a snack sometimes between, you know, 
before concerts and after. It's like a jukebox here. And this is, I think this is called Wall Street. Now where the sub place was back in the 90s, I would come over here and get, get food located inside this door. It used to be the Anja Built Hotel located at 37 North Avenue. Now this is kind of interesting. This place used to be called Barbarella. Then they changed the name for years and years and years and years and years. And very recently, like a year ago, they changed the name back to its old timey name, Barbarella. But now it's back and now called The Corner. So Barbarella again has been erased from existence next to 64 North, which used to be Barbecue Bar. 64 North and then The Social, which I played many concerts at. You said you played at The Social once too, in a years band? Ago. Yeah, years That's cool. Ago, man. Both you and myself graced the stage. Yep inside the social. I remember parking in the little alley out around back, the back and it took forever to back that trailer in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a talent that most, it, it, backing a trailer in is quite the talent. I usually the one to do it for other bands too. I was just informed by one of the business owners over there next to the hot dog cart place that this parking down on a Sunday is no longer free down here anymore. So this is something that just happened. So you can see a lot of the officers are now giving tickets to everyone walking through here. No more free parking in downtown Orlando on a Sunday. All right, and Micah recommends this place called Gringos Locos, which has Orlando's best taco. And I do love taco. Ooh, look at that bug going by. I only missed it for just a second. There was a VW Volkswagen bus. I ended up having something called a Drunk Gringo, which is basically a burrito with everything. Everything but the kitchen sink is on this thing. The Drunk Gringo. And if you're wondering what that noise was, that was Micah throwing away something in this garbage can. I thought it was gonna be, it's empty. Yeah. There's nothing to stop the sound. <laughs> All right, into the History Center now. We go. Okay, here is the guy on the gator that's out front. It was a real person. Look at this, right here. Taken in 1885, just two blocks from the History Center. Often called off the, the gator wrestler. The man was identified as Bunk Baxter. Oh, Bunk. Baxter. Yeah. Cost of admission was $8 per person. But when you walk in, it's multiple levels. Check this over here. These bears, these polar bears. Bill Bear, probably a play on words was his last name, but he had in his mall, the Altamont Mall shoppers would shop at his store and he had his bears. You can squeeze in there? Let's try it. Squeezing in there? The Mercury -tiny capsule. But, dude, everything works. It works! It works! Getting some Adams Family vibes? A little bit, and some, uh, some Norway. Epcot. Oh, yeah. A little Epcot Norway. Yeah. Since we're going to Epcot, it's like fresh on your mind. That's right. Maelstrom. Okay, now making our way into the courtroom here has the public entrance. Now, last time I was here a few years ago, there was a carving, an inscription. You can't even get over there anymore. They have it stanchioned off. You're not allowed to walk over there anymore. Interesting. They've got it blocked off. Oh, wow. Well, this sign right here says that it's not his signature. It is? It says it's not. Oh, okay. Not. Where is it at? It's right here. It was On the corner. Oh, it's right yeah. there. They have it covered so up. supposedly Bundy's signature is down there because he was tried in this courtroom. I'm trying to zoom in on it, but it does say Ted. Yeah. They used to have it covered up with a clear piece of uh, yeah. plastic. And now you can't go over there, so they yeah. uncovered it. Aha! Okay. It was the building annex adjacent to this building in 1978. This carving is not his. However, look at this. This is fascinating. This is a this is courtroom B in 1960. Look at this. So that's what it looked like then. This is what it looks like current day, 2022. And into the room about theme parks, building a kingdom. And it's not just Disney stuff in here. I believe they have Universal SeaWorld and Cypress Gardens. Now, what if this clock said 1004? What would that signify? Lightning striking the clock tower and sending you back to 1985. Is that the correct time? Is it, all, is it five minutes to noon? I don't even think that's right. What yeah. time is it exactly? 12.33. So that clock is incorrect. Ooh, I believe down in here. So you got downtown there, 
You got the planes flying out of Orlando International and all over. There is a gator head down there, which signifies Gatorland. You got Shamu down there that signifies SeaWorld. You got the globe for Universal Studios right there. And also Blizzard Beach. You got the Hollywood Tower. You got the Tree of Life. You got Spaceship Earth. You got Cinderella Castle. You also have the Earful Tower. You do not see a lot of Earful Tower references anymore now that they removed it from the old MGM Studios, now Hollywood Studios. But check that out. Right next to the sphere of Epcot Center, the Earful Tower. And way over there, the Claremont Citrus Tower with some of the postcards and photographs of the good old days up there. A lot of beach life and whatnot. There's my, my reflection in the mirror. Thankfully, I'm not a vampire, so you can see me. If I was a vampire, you would not be able to see me. Cypress Gardens, one of the first ever themed attractions here in town, which is now Legoland. Legoland took over the property of Cypress Gardens. Look at this tree right here. And Wigwam Village, which is now gone. Back over here to this little model. If you push this button, it illuminates what we, what is I-4 going across there. And I did show this earlier, but we were just discussing this. And I've mentioned this in my videos before when I lived out in Hollywood. This globe is, mo is the one that used to be at Universal Florida. Micah just reminded me that it was moved out to California. So if you're ever at Universal Hollywood, it's the old globe from like the 90s mm -hmm. that was moved out. So if you have any pictures in front of the globe at Universal Orlando, that is the one that's now sitting in front of Universal Hollywood. Oh. Look at this. Next to the Bell's Factory Outlet sign is almost like a little circular tubing area with a bunch of people rafting down there. Yep. What is that supposed to be? Water mania? Wet and wild. Wet and wild. That's probably wet. supposed to yes. symbolize wet and wild. Right next to SeaWorld makes total sense. Yeah, okay. So we got a little wet and wildage. Yeah, that's all international there. Yeah. And then, yeah, I guess you, yeah, Universal's over there on the other side of International Drive. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, that's supposed to be Wonderworks, the upside down building of Wonderworks next to Shamu. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> that's the, so it's like completely upside down, the roofs for the bottom and the, yeah, the root system of the grass is the roof. Also, how many Shamus have there been? Like 14? Oh my gosh, I'm sure. Uh, probably <laughs> at, least a, at least a baker's dozen. Yeah. So if you ever want to see the Earful Tower, you know, you just have to show up to this museum. Earful Tower. Remember when they said they're going to move the Earful Tower from Studios over to Disney Springs? Yeah. Didn't happen. Nope. They got our hopes up. I wish it did. So now all you got to do is just show up here to this little museum, and that's really the only place you can see the Earful Tower, except one little secret spot up on the marquee. That's right. At Hollywood Studios. That's right. At the corner of Hollywood and Vine. That's it. For now. Secrets. All right, this is really fascinating. In 1905, H.H. H. Dixon created Dixon's Folly as an experiment next to his store. He laid track on Lakeview Avenue. Cars coming the opposite, opposite sides would meet in the middle and have to back up. His brilliant idea to not get stuck in the mud was this track right here, known as Dixon's Folly. This is a little remnant of it right there. I really do love the theming through here. So you got a fireplace down here. You got the old bed here. And this item is on top of the bed is to keep the mosquitoes. And they're pumping in sounds of bugs and crickets outside to give the effect of what it's like to be in Florida on a summer night. Also, this is a spinning wheel, circa 1700, used to make thread. Okay, they are making cane candy. I thought maybe they were like doing like a like tugging rope or something, but no, it's like cane candy. That's very interesting. Yeah, and taffy too. Taffy. Yeah, taffy, that's the word I'm looking for. Now they do have exhibits that change out occasionally up on the second floor, and this one will be coming in about a month or so. They're setting up for it now. I wasn't able to go up there, but it's gonna be dedicated to music in the Orlando area from 85 to 2001, which I went to a lot of the shows that are listed up there. Red Cross saw them open up for Radiohead, and Red Law saw them at the Edge, Fishbone saw them with no effects at Visage, Fugazi played across the street at the theater next to the social, Belly, oh, there's the Belly in Radiohead. So it was Red Cross, Belly, and Radiohead. Yeah, there's the flyer right there, Belly and Radiohead. That was at Visage, 10 bucks I was at that show. Long time ago, toasters. I saw the toasters across at Barbarella. It was Murphy's Law and the toasters. That might be the flyer from that. 
Uh, this is pretty interesting. Unwritten Law with Sprung Monkey, both San Diego bands toured together a lot. Of course, Blink also was the other one. So you got Blink, Sprung Monkey, and Unwritten Law, you saw always tour together. I can't tell if it said Blink is on there, but yeah, Sprung Monkey actually stayed at my friend Rob and I when we were roommates. They stayed at our house. Of course, that was a long, long time ago. It was mid 90s. There's also the Good Times Tour, which was Sprung Monkey, Blink, Seven Seconds, and then Written Law. I think that was what it was. Went to that show over in Melbourne, too. All right, I have now paid the $125. Everything is ready to go, and I am now a proud member of the Orange County Library System. Even though I live in Osceola County, that's why I pay the $125. The thing that's awesome is I am allowed to check out a massive amount of books for the first two weeks, 10 members. But after I have my library card for two weeks, a hundred books every two weeks. Now we've been in here for a while. I'm not gonna show everything I'm kind of feasting my eyes on, but because we are going to Epcot, I do wanna show one or two things. I have never in my entire life seen, look at this, the evolution of Epcot Center Keepsake Edition. This is from October 24th, 1982. Micah, have you ever seen this photo before? Nope. Look at this. Opening day yep. on October 1st. Look at these guys on the roof. Yes. I'm starting to have a love affair with libraries. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to agree. I'm pretty glad that Epcot is here. Now, usually, you know, this time of the time, back in then, in the early 80s, Epcot was all capitals. But here, it's all lowercase. That's true. <laughs> And since we're both APs and have been for a while, it's very interesting to see back in the early 80s what the not only ticket price was, but also an annual pass price for an adult, a hundred dollars. Take my money. And that was the glory days of Epcot Center. Also, Future World is a thing of the past. I didn't mean to say it in that fashion, the future being the past, but there is no Future World anymore. Yeah. Look at this. I don't think I've ever seen that photo of the rainbow tunnel. Mm -mm. I've seen the one with the dream finder in front of it and Michael Jackson in front of it, but never guess like that. In my recollection. And some sentiments ring true today. It was true then and it's true, <laughs> true now. Yeah. Also the old SeaWorld entrance, the one from Jaws 3 that they tore down now the new entrance. But you're not even allowed to smoke in the parks anymore. Look at this lighter they used to sell. I'm not a smoker. I want that lighter. That's like a, that's like called a Zippo, right? Big, yeah. Okay, I left the fourth floor down on the third floor. Now, it turns out that you cannot take home any of the Disney Archive books, even though a lot of them look very similar to this. You gotta go down to the third floor to find items. And I found this one here, this book about Eisner. I was like Eisner, I'm going to read up and learn a little bit more about the man himself. The remaking of Disney. I'm going to check this out. And I do know a lot about Back to the Future. Secrets, the making of Back to the Future. I actually own this. Yeah. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. I don't have this one though. No. What the making of. It's pretty cool. The hoverboard scene. Mm -hmm. There's Huey Lewis there. Some of the original poster artwork. And they also have DVDs and things like that you can rent out. See what kind of selection they have. And you also check out down here on the bottom floor. Yeah, here's the DVDs. I won't say free rentals, but they are included in with your library card. You got Frozen 2 over here, but then also some of the classic, the horse in the gray flannel suit. Kurt Russell. That's a deep cut. And these right here, the treasures. Oh, the Hardy Boys. Yeah, the whole collection right there. They do have some, some old gold stuff here. Yeah. Yeah, I know in a world of streaming, it's this has kind of gone by the, the wayside, but I do like physical media and hard copy stuff. I have a lot of Blu-rays and DVDs, and I have a few VHS, but not too many. I love this movie too, Eternal Sunshine. So I'll probably at some point, oh, Rushmore. One of my favorite Wes Andersons. And if you want to rent out, or check out, I should say, music on CDs, they have music on CDs through here, a lot of different rows of music. It's pretty amazing in the day of, you know, everything is digital. You can find a lot of this stuff with a quick little search, you know, with all the music sites and stuff, but there are still CDs out there. Flogging Molly there. Even in a complete array of Blink-182 stuff. You got Dude Ranch there. 
That's pre-Travis Barker. Yep. And the first thing I did when I scanned my books, I reached for my wallet and pulled out my car, my credit card. I went to pay. <laughs> Gotta say, it's pretty nice to just have a one-time fee and be done with it. Just show the card. Anytime I go in and out of there, I can walk out with something. Yeah. And these aren't due back till like the 29th. So I'll be able to read both of these. Now there's also a library in Celebration, the town I live in. And it might get a library card there well as well too, but this one seems a lot more massive. It seems to be a lot bigger selection of the Disney archives like I was talking about. I just gotta remember next time. Like a lot of them I can't leave. I gotta just be, I gotta sit at the desk and kind of read the, the massive amount. So some of them you can't check out. And now approaching Epcot. Every time I see the capitalized E and then the small PCOT, I wonder since they're going back to kind of the retro look if they're gonna capitalize this on the on the entryway at some point. Maybe. It's pretty cool. We were just looking at all those articles yep. of the old tiny Epcot Center. And now we're standing here under the monorail as it goes by. It was neat to see all the monorails in advertisement for companies that were saying, welcome Epcot Center to the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Definitely need a little bit of something to wet my whistle. Not going to go with Beverly. You know, usually I get to Madagascar, but I yeah. forgot that my, my favorite is Country Club. I'm in Club Cool, by the way. There's a sour plum. I really like the Country Club. I'm gonna do that one I'm too. I'm gonna drink like six of these. Oh yeah, what are the odds? The monorail going by while I am heading over now to Guardians. Now we're waiting in the queue for Guardians and the ride broke down, so they gave us a return time. So we're gonna go back just a little bit later, but for now we're gonna go up in the Epcot Lounge and just kind of relax up there in the AC. So it's time to return to Guardians. And the AC is definitely working in here, which is nice. Like this view of Spaceship Earth over on the horizon. Now I looked at the pin trading board, didn't really find anything I liked, but they did have these buttons, 50th anniversary buttons. So I went ahead and got the goofy one and the D DVC one with the castle on it there. And Micah just noticed that this is something we saw in the newspaper a little bit earlier over at the library. Check it out. There's a photo I took of that opening day newspaper article. It's the same logo. They're starting to bring it back for DVC. Good eye. Look, it's really coming down noon. It's streams, streams of water going down the pyramid. I didn't bring my umbrella with me, so I'm glad we're in here, not out there. Great minds think alike. Mike is also documenting this for posterity. There goes the ma. I think a butterfly just went by too. Now this will be my fourth time I've been on this. I've got four different songs. I got Blondie One Way or Another. I got I Ran by Flock of Seagulls. And I got Tears for Fear. Everybody wants to rule the world. Hopefully I get a fourth song today. And we are on first row. We just asked for first row. You see they're getting ready to load up the second row with another some other guests there. If you want to ask for first row, it looks like they have A, B, and C first row over here. You just wait it out, so all you have to do is ask, and you can get first row. It should be pretty dang awesome. Have you watched any spoilers or any ride-throughs or anything on this? No. You're about to have your mind blown. <laughs> Right I'm now. excited! Yeah, I think you're gonna, front row. I think you're really gonna like it. Your first impression was this looks like Space Mountain Disneyland because it has the side by side seating. It kind of reminds me of Space Mountain, rock and roller coaster, but a lot more fluid and a lot more, a lot more music. That's exciting. Yeah. Now I know rock and roller coaster has a lot of music on it too, but you know what I mean. A lot of song choices on this one. First row. All right, and we are off. I'll see you after the ride. It's happening. All right, my fourth time on Guardians, and thankfully, luckily, I have gotten four distinct songs. This time I got Conga by Gloria Estefan. So four rides, four songs. All right, the moment of truth. What'd you think? Dude, you like it's it? Hard to, yes, I loved it. Um, it's hard to explain, but you feel weightless. It's something you've never experienced before on a ride. Um, a lot of similarities to Spaceship Earth and Rock and Roller Coaster, like you said. Space, Space Mountain. Space Mountain. And it just honestly left me kind of like at the end i didn't talk for a minute yeah like i sat there and was like kind of recollecting like what i just saw i'm glad you liked it it was insane yeah you have to ride that if you come down to and i always like when you walk past the creation shop check out in the glare of the window spaceship earth over there isn't that awesome the reflection reflections of earth spaceship and instead of walking back to our vehicle with the 
walked over here where the bus drop-off pickup depot is. Just wanted to show some retro, but these have been here for a long time, this telephone booth and all that. Pretty cool. Who knows what year? This was definitely probably opening day though. Oh yeah. Look up here, this like very futuristic little, yeah. you know, sundial, not sundials, but sun roofs. Little spheres on And whatnot, it's so cool. Awesome. Vintage Epcot celebration of the upcoming 40th anniversary of Epcot on October 1st. Classic. And I would imagine this is something that's been around for a few years too. Kind of very has like a retro group sales. This has probably been here for a while. What'd you find? It's the old Leva Legacy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, still haven't updated it. It's amazing that for years and years, everyone wanted these gone, including me. And now that they're gone, it's now I get excited about seeing, seeing, a, it from seeing a picture of them. <laughs> yep. And that's going to do it from today from the parking lot. The lime green monorail going by in all its glory in front of the tree line and spaceship Earth. A view across the parking lot here at Epcot Center. It was a fun day. Did a lot of stuff today. A heck of a lot of stuff. Had a good time doing it. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. There's a very distinct rainbow up in the sky. Take a look at that. It's awesome. It's only like a partial rainbow, like has a cutoff point, but there's like a rainbow just floating up there. Oh yeah, I did end up pin trading one of my pins for this one, this train. Nice.